I'm going to read a little, uh, a brief section. The book, as I mentioned, is very graphic and raw in places. I felt it was necessary for it to be for you to understand some of what the characters experience. And I'm not able to read much of it aloud, so I won't try, but I am going to read a section about the burdens of doubt and moral freight that people can carry after participation in combat. The context for this is it's a Navy corpsman. Um, most of you probably know what a corpsman is, but think medic. It's the Navy's version of an Army medic, and they provide, the corpsmen provide trauma care to Marines. And this corpsman uh, had just saved his former roommate's life, had been shot through the head. And it's about the doubts that attended him almost instantly. The Marines loaded Smith onto a polis litter, lifted him, and rushed to the aircraft. It was a Huey gunship, not a medevac bird. Smith was still breathing, breathing when they laid him inside. Kirby's job was done. He had to hand over his friend. Over the roar of the engine, he shouted life-saving steps to the door gunner, tapped Smith on the leg, and ran clear. The blade swept up dust and grass and blew the red smoke away, scattering it in pink wisps. The helicopter moved low over the field, gaining elevation, cleared a date palm grove, and was gone. Suddenly there was nothing for Kirby to do. He ran back to his truck and plopped into the right front seat. The company began moving. Someone said a car had sped away after the shot, heading to a house that weapons company would now search. Kirby sat in the front seat, his hands and arms and legs wet with his friend's blood. It was clotting, sticky, and still warm. He held Smith's helmet. He turned it over to look at where the bullet passed through. The bullet rolled inside. It was an armor-piercing 7.62 by 5.4 round. It had zipped through the front of the helmet and then the top of Smith's head. Kirby lifted it out and inspected it, rolling it in his hand. It kept its shape. He put it in his pocket. Nausea came in waves. Outside, Weapons Company's Marines were rushing to the house where they had heard the sniper might have hidden. They detained two men. Kirby had not been ordered out. He stayed in his seat, listening to the radio reports, waiting to be called, trembling with an energy that he could neither channel nor contain. Tears streamed down his face. He stared at his bloody hands and at the stains on his legs and lap where he had cradled Smith's head. He shook uncontrollably. He rocked back and forth in the seat. Never before had he saved a life. He had thought it would be cool. Instead, he felt guilty. He had seen the entrance and exit wounds and the torn brain matter and had a sense of what was missing. Some of it was inside the helmet on his lap. Kirby could visualize the path of the steel bullet through his friend's skull. If Smith survived the trip to the first hospital, <coughs> if he made it through stabilization and surgery and the transfer to Germany, what kind of life could he expect? Kirby had acted in the moment, holding emotions in check so he could do his job. Now his emotions broke free. He had a chance to think past the second-by-second -second sequence and the tasks of life-saving steps. He was not sure what saving a life meant. Did I do that for me, Kirby wondered, or for him? He did not know whether Smith was even still alive. There was no medic on the Huey. He might die on the way. Kirby had done what he had most wanted to do and was trying not to vomit. I'll jump ahead and say Smith survived and he's still alive and Doc, Kirby, and Colin, Colin Smith remain friends and that for about a week or more I have to go and check my notes. Probably it's in the book. Check there. Kirby was basically an insomniac, walking almost like, if you can imagine, zombie fashion, unsure, waiting for uh, word of Smith and how his you know neurology was faring. And there came a moment later in the book 
where he gets a phone call from Smith's father who says to him basically, as long as I'm alive, you'll always have a father in Ohio. So that's the outcome of that scene.